In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Although I don't have a formal sermon prepared for this morning, I did just want to take some time to share some reflections that I've had over the past several weeks as we've seen the situation in Artsakh really magnifying. And I think a lot of it can be um, summed up in a phrase that was um, touted by the Armenians in the midst of the war two years ago, or three years ago at this point, the, the war in 2020, the original uh, conflict where much of the land was taken um, from Artsakh. And this phrase was, Hakteluek. And it was this, and which essentially means, uh, we will win, we will win, we will be victorious. And there was really hope during this, this war that because we are a God-fearing people and the Azeris are not, that we ultimately would be able to retain the territory of Artsakh. And the Armenian people were really faced with a dilemma at this point, a dilemma of faith, because by the end of that war, the majority of our ancestral lands had been taken, and what had been left was, was a, a mere fa fragment of, of what we had once had. And it really, I think, made a lot of people pause. And the thought was, if we believe in God and God is on our side, how could we have lost this territory? And we find ourselves in a similar scenario right now, um, that those who are left in Artsakh are in a really desperate place, um, at a point where even getting a loaf or two of bread is of difficulty, where really no goods are able to come in or out of that territory that's being blockaded by the Azeri government. And so the question becomes, what does victory look like in the eye of the Christian? And what's really s struck me about this question is that today, the day that our primate called on us to hold this prayer service, um, there are two very interesting insights that we find in our readings today that just happen to be assigned for this day. It's, they, they aren't special to this prayer service, they're just the ones that fall on this particular Wednesday of the year. I mean, the first comes from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, where he says, My beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. What's interesting about this line, which is talking about perseverance, which is talking about continuing to do the work of the Lord no matter what circumstance you find yourself, is what came right before the reading. What came right before the reading, which we didn't hear today, was St. Paul's discussion about victory, and specifically victory in relation to death. St. Paul has this famous line where he says, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? So very interesting, from the Christian context, victory or winning does not necessarily mean coming out with the political advantage at the end of the day. That even death can take us, and yet we are still the victors. And so after giving this explanation, St. Paul says, keep doing your work. You know what your work is as Christians. And he goes on to talk about holding church collections for one of the, the seed parishes that St. Paul is going to be establishing. But keep doing your work as the church. Because it doesn't matter what circumstances life throws at you. Ultimate victory has already been won by Christ. There is nothing that anyone in this world can do to take that away. Even if this war ends up not going our way, even if this conflict ends up not going our way, even through the sufferings of these people, which is tragic and horrific and evil, even so, our faith as Christians, our bold faith as Christians, is that victory is still ours. So indeed, it doesn't matter the result um, for us to be able to say that. It matters the result for the lives of those who are involved, and we pray that this conflict be resolved. However, if we're looking for who's on the winning side and who's on the losing side, the Armenians have already won. Because we have Christ. We have the creator of the universe who has come and has died and has shown us that even through death, victory can arise. That's what our prayer needs to be today. The second, um, I guess, cautionary tale that we get through the Gospel reading is when 
Um, Jesus describes the gospel and the kingdom of heaven being spread like seed in the field, and he describes the different types of the field that the seed might fall on. And one of them that he, that he talks about is the following. He says that there was seed that was sown upon rocky ground, who the people who hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy, and yet they have not rooted themselves in the word of God. And so when they endure tribulation or persecution, they immediately fall away. The challenge for us at this moment is that in the midst of what seems like an impossible situation, in the midst of what seems like um, something that's leading to nothing but defeat for the Armenian people, are we going to be like that seed that fell on the rocky ground? Are we able to accept the gospel of Jesus Christ simply when things are going our way? Or are we able to persevere in the midst of tribulation and realize that God is still with us in the midst of it? So what do we do as Christians? We pray. This is a very difficult situation because unlike other conflicts in, in, in the past that we've dealt with with Armenia, for example, the earthquake. Um, I was a little too young to really, um, I wasn't even born when the earthquake happened in, in, in the midst of the repair. I was quite young. Um, but I know, f talking with people, that there was quite an effort, there was quite movements throughout the diocese to raise funds to be able to help in that situation. This situation is not like that situation. It doesn't matter how much money we raise, um, the issue is that nothing that we raise can actually make it into the country. And so, there are things that we can do, and that we should do, which include writing to our congressmen and to our governor and to bring light to this issue. And we all should do this, and we are all compelled to do this. However, what we can do is limited. And that's hard for us, I think. However, what we can and what we must do, and the first thing that we need to do is to pray, is to come together in prayer. Um, Bishop Daniel, in, in the midst of the, the pandemic, when everything kind of had first happened, um, he said, people often say, you know, there's nothing left to do but pray. And he said, but I'm going to tell you the opposite. The first thing that we should do is pray. And that truly is the case. And in this moment, this is the first thing that we should do. And so, as I said at the beginning of the service, you'll find that this prayer for Artsakh that we are about to, to, to pray um, together, that I have printed it out and left it in the vestibule. I encourage each of you to take a copy home and that you find one time during the day, whether it's right when you get up in the morning or before you go to sleep, to read this prayer every single day in solidarity with the rest of our diocese and ultimately with the people of Artsakh. Let us continue praying and let us put our faith in the only source that can truly resolve this conflict, which is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And no matter what the immediate result might be, let us still understand and celebrate the fact that we have won ultimately through the victory of Jesus Christ on the cross. Glory and worship to him with the Father and with the Holy Spirit, now and always and unto the ages of ages. Amen.